Hi, this is Tony, AE0KW, and today I'm going to demonstrate Open890, uh, which is a web-based remote control application for the Kenwood TS890 ham radio, and it's usable on any operating system uh, through a modern web browser. Uh, and why did I build this? Well, um, the remote control software that Kenwood provides, this is uh, ARCP890, and as you can see, it's difficult to use. Um, there's buttons everywhere. Uh, they don't actually mimic the physical layout of the buttons on the radio. And uh, if you're really familiar with the radio, if you've got it in front of you, you, you build up this memory of knowing where controls are, and where buttons are to do various things. And the software from Kenwood, it, it's just not laid out very well. Um, it also, if you re resize the screen, they don't, they let you squish it kind of in weird directions and it's really easy to get it looking uh, kind of goofy. And you have to remember to go up to, uh, through a menu and find the main window thing and set it. Um, so this, this, this application is just, it's difficult to use. It's not the best, um, but the, I can see how the engineer, the Kenwood engineers they you they just want to expose all of the functionality for the radio and granted the radio is really complicated there's something like 80 or 90 physical buttons on the radio and to allow all that functionality you need lots of buttons you need to be lots of ways to access all of that um, uh, all, additionally this software only runs on windows so if you're on a mac user if you're a linux user you're out of luck unless you run uh, something like uh, VirtualBox or VMware and run run Windows in a VM to get access to the software. Um, so part of uh, this project, uh, which I'm calling Open 890, was I wanted a usable but powerful interface to my uh, TS-890. And I wanted to take advantage of things that the uh, TS-890 allows you to do over the Ethernet port, uh, but maybe is try to find a better way to do it uh, in uh, in the software than the than the 890 ARCP software uh, does it. So this is still a work in progress. There's lots of missing missing features. Um, the server it, it's a client server architecture, so um, it currently have it running on Linux, um, and I'm coming up with ways to allow it to run native run, have the server run on Windows and Mac or like a Raspberry Pi, so you could run run this so the server software and then connect to it uh, with your favorite web, web browser. Um, so let's do a quick tour here. Um, you can, um, so I'm here, I'm tuning the radio, uh, the dial, I'm spinning the dial and it keeps it updated. You can see tuning around, um, but you can also click on the waterfall and the band scope and tune. Um, and you can also click and drag to tune around, which is not something that the remote software from Kenwood allows you to do. You can only click and choose specific spots. So this allows you to kind of fine tune into uh, where you want to go. Um, also, uh, if your mouse cursor is over the band scope here and you uh, spin the mouse wheel, you can have it tune uh, by course steps um, equivalent to the multi CH uh, control on the radio. And um, you can also use the mouse wheel for adjusting the reference level. So, so things like this, uh, you can put the scope up or down uh, and kind of adjust the shift of the uh, band scope. Um, another thing you might have noticed is the extra waterfall here up underneath the pass band scope. And this is something that the 890 doesn't even display on the radio itself or in the remote software. Um, but fortunately, I've got access to the passband spectrum uh, data, which then you can derive the, the waterfalls from. So I was able to uh, add that as far as functionality. Um, there's some other cool functionality here. So um, part of the trick of building the software and making it web-based is I didn't want to just put 80 or 90 different buttons on the screen and completely overwhelm the user. So I was trying to find different ways of providing functionality of the radio uh, without just make turning it into a button. So one example uh, would be CW Tune, 
So let me shift over to the CW portion of 20 meters. And if I, I can scroll down here, I've got a bunch of buttons, uh, which will probably end up going away. But if I get close to a CW signal, uh, you can kind of see it on the side of the passband here. And if I simply click, uh, click my mouse in the passband here, it'll perform the CW tune function. And of course, now the s now they went away. So let me see if I can find another signal to tune into. Here's one. If I click, the radio performs the CW tune. Try it again over here. Click, and it just finds it. So it's uh, I feel like it's a very sort of intuitive way of providing this functionality without just adding a another button uh, to to the interface. Uh, some other work in progress stuff. Um, I've got themes. So uh, because this is just a web application, uh, it's styled with, it's just built with HTML and CSS. So I can do things like I can build a uh, Elecraft theme uh, mimicking the kind of look and feel of a uh, Elecraft K3 or PX3 uh, with the yellow uh, spectrum and the green passband. Or I've got, came up with this uh, cool theme called Phosphor Green, and it gives you sort of a retro uh, retro uh, blurry oscilloscope look. Um, so there are some, some very cool uh, possibilities with um, even just different uh, waterfall themes and that kind of thing that the uh, TS-890 just doesn't give you or the, the s remote control software uh, doesn't give you. Another cool thing that I've got is uh, the radio also tells me when menus are open. So if I push the menu button on the radio here, I can start displaying all the various menus that the radio has. And one of my goals is to build this all out in HTML and allow you to kind of go through the radio uh, menus as you would on the physical radio uh, in a very sort of straightforward way, kind of mimic, mimicking the, uh, the, the, the usability of the radio that you're already familiar with, um, instead of trying to dig through a bunch of drop down menus, uh, like in the ARCP software. Um, so obviously this is still a work in progress. Um, I've got all these buttons here down here that were, was more of a, just get the buttons on the screen to get the functionality working. Um, my next goal is to really figure out the UI. Um, like I said, I didn't want to just start putting buttons on the screen that would overload the user. Um, so I need to find a balance between unlocking the power of the radio and all the features of the radio, but also keeping the interface fairly simple and fairly easy to use. And that's going to be a, it's going to be a long project. Um, another thing I need to figure out is desktop use versus like a tablet or a phone operation. Um, I've kind of built this as a companion to if you've got the radio on the desk in front of you and you want like a nice band scope on a computer screen um, and you might have a computer in front of you. Um, but that doesn't prevent me from uh, making it more of a touch base interface. So you could load this up, uh, load, the, load this up in a web browser on your tablet, your iPad, your phone. Uh, and remote access your 890 uh, over the your local network or over the internet um, in a very easy way. Um, one thing people really like to complain about this this radio is the lack of Y scale adjustment uh, for the spectrum scope. Um, I've got I've got the ability to do that. Um, that's on my list of things to do. Um, I don't yet support in-browser audio streaming, but the the radio will stream audio to clients. So I've already sort of figured out um, how to get the audio samples to, to the browser. And I really just need to figure out how I'm actually going to play those audio samples in the browser. So once I get that working, it will truly be a full remote operation uh, uh, application for the 890 where you just load it up in your web browser, you get the audio playing, you can tune around, you can listen to CW. Um, and eventually, ultimately, I'd like to be able to uh, support transmitting, transmitting audio. Um, you can capture audio in the browser and send it back to the radio. Um, obviously, that's sort of a pipe dream, but uh, long term, I'd like to be able to do that. Uh, so that's basically it. Um, I am going to make this an open source project. Um, if you've got 
interest in this in either helping or ideas of what you'd like to see as far as features go, um, please leave a comment in the video uh, or get in touch and uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm super excited for this project and I hope you like it. Thanks.